Let's talk about how we make a map in ArcMap. So before we compose a map, the first thing we ask ourselves is what's the purpose of the map? What, what are we trying to accomplish here? Uh, what's the theme? So in this case, what I'm out to do is to create a map of the contiguous US states that shows population distribution. Right? That's my goal. So in order to do that, I'm going to pull data from the USA folder and symbolize it appropriately so that I can display the information the way that I want. So in our catalog, I've made a connection to the folder that contains the data that I need. And I know that uh, the crucial layer here is the states layer because that contains population data. And that's the scale at which I want to really show the information. So I'm going to bring the states layer in. And then for a little context, I'm going to throw in lakes and rivers. Okay. Okay, and I think that's enough for the second for a moment. States should probably go on the bottom so it doesn't obscure the other items. River is probably on the top so it's not obscured by anything else. So I'm going to um, zoom in to um, the contiguous US because that's the area of, of interest of focus that I'm going to have. And I zoom in and I'm also going to be cognizant of the fact that Right now the data is unprojected. It's working with a geographic coordinate system. And I can tell because the US looks very stretched out. I can see this parallel right here, the 49th parallel border between the US and Canada is not that straight. If you look on a globe, you know that it shouldn't look like that. So I'm going to choose a projection that more accurately reflects the shape of the US. So I'm going to go to the properties to the, for the data frame by right clicking on layers, choosing properties. Okay, I can see right now, right now that it's set to this GCS or geographic coordinate system. I'm going to scroll up and collapse the geographic coordinate systems uh, folder and go into projected coordinate systems, continental, North America. And then what I'm looking for is a projection that's going to preserve the relative sizes of the states in the US. And, and I want that because I'm going to be looking at population, and when I'm comparing population among states, I want to get a more accurate sense of, of the things I'm comparing. So I want the sizes of things to be uh, relatively accurate. So there's this one particular projection here called USA Contiguous Albers Area Equal Area Conic. Well, contiguous refers to the contiguous lower 48, and that's where I'm focusing on. The equal area indicates that the areas are relatively preserved and relatively accurate to one another. And that's important for what I'm showing because, again, I'm comparing among states. So I'll choose that. And right away, you can see it reshapes itself a little bit. It looks a little more like a globe with that curve at that parallel. So I'm going to focus again a little more closely. All right. The next step is symbolization. So uh, let's start with the easy ones. The rivers, well, red isn't a very intuitive color for rivers. Rivers probably should be blue. So I'm going to click on the a uh, little line underneath rivers so I can bring up the symbol selector and there's already conveniently an uh, option for river and so I'll choose that and same thing with the lakes um, I want the blue of the lakes to match the blue of the river so I'll click on the polygon beneath lakes and lo and behold there's also a symbol already set up for lakes choose that and then with the states I could change the color for the states um, but I want it that's where we want to play with the symbolization so I'm going to go to the state's properties and I see that when I'm in the symbology tab it shows me what's going on currently and right now there's a single symbol that's being used to show all the states are all the same color and I could change that color to something a little more uh, appropriate maybe like a beige or a brown but actually the states layer is the one that contains the information that I'm interested in showing specifically population and so the question is how do I show that well, here's where you manipulate the symbolization of your data uh, when you're working with a layer. So you have two basic options. The ones you're going to work with more often are going to be categories and quantities. So categories, just to go through that one first, is for working with categorical name, categorical data rather, which are, are usually distinguishing IDs or names. So if I was making a map of states and trying to distinguish all the states simply by the names, um, this is what I'd use, unique values. And so what I'd do is I would choose the field in from the attribute table that contains the information that I was trying to display. So in this case, let's say I was trying to show state names, okay? Or better yet, let's say that I was trying to show, show subregions, right? To make it simpler. So subregions, and I hit all, add all values, OK? 
okay? And what it'll do is it'll classify, it'll assign a random color to each of the unique values that are in the column or field of the attribute table that contains subregions, okay? If I hit OK, those are applied to the data, and what I see is that all the states that share a particular subregion category, right, are given the same color, and that's reflected over here in the table of contents. So for categorical data, what you want are distinguishing hues, distinguishing colors. You want to make a clear contrast between one category and another category. And so that's when you use this kind of uh, rainbow of colors, so to speak. But we're not interested in categories. We're interested in numbers. We're looking at population. So I'm going to go back into the states layer, go to the properties. And instead of choosing categories, I'm going to look under quantities. In quantities, you have several options. And quantitative data can be shown in a lot of different ways. So I'm going to stick with graduated colors for the moment. And so graduate colors is how you compose a choropleth map, which is what I was thinking of composing. So if I'm going to go with that, I'll make sure it says graduated colors on the left. And then under the fields area, where it says value, I'm going to choose the column or field that contains the population data that I want to show. So here, population 2005 is the field, the column in the attribute table that contains the information I want. So if I choose that, it automatically breaks the data into five ranges, right, five classifications, um, and gives me a color ramp. You can change the color ramp if you want, but in general, you want the color ramp to run from light to dark, particularly when you're showing quantitative information where you're trying to show low to high. You do not want a colored rainbow when you're showing a range of numbers because that would be confusing. So what you want for numbers that run continuously from low to high, you want a color ramp that runs from light to dark. And typically, light means lower numbers. It doesn't have to be, but that's generally how it goes. So I hit OK, and right away the data is displayed showing a variation of colors, and again knowing that light means lower numbers and dark means higher numbers. And so I can see that California really sticks out as the most populated state in the lower 48. Texas, Florida, Pennsylvania, New York, Illinois, those stick out as well as being largely large population states. Okay, a couple things to consider though. Uh, let's go back into the properties for states for a second. When you're choosing your symbolization method, one of the things that happens in ARC is that it automatically chooses by default the system called natural breaks. That's the classification system. If you look at the numbers in the, in, the, in the ranges, you might notice that the ranges are not the same size for each classification. So for example, in that first range, it runs from 510,000 to 1.9 million. So the range is about 1.4 million, right? That spans about 1.4 million. If you look at the next number, right, you've got about 1.9 million to 5.9 2 million, right? 5,257,000 some. So now you've got a span of a little over 3 million, almost 4 million, right? And again, down the classifications, they're all different sizes. And the reason that it does this is because this method, natural breaks, is a system that allows you to try to capture um, entities that have similar values, or at least that are kind of close to one another. So if you look at the, if you click on the classify button, It'll show you how the data is broken out. This histogram shows you how the U.S. state population data is distributed, right? And so it runs. If you look on the lower the lower axis, the lower number of 510,000, and then the highest number of about 36 million some. Okay, that's the range of possible population values across all the states. We suspect California is the one that's over here on the far right. The gray bars show you. Let's see this gray bar right here shows you how many states fall into that number category. And you can tell the numbers of states right here along this axis. So this amounts to essentially one, that's California, right? But if you look at the other gray bars where they're distributed, so in the range of 510,000 to, and then here's the break value, 1.9 million, all right, you have about seven states that are right about 500 some thousand. You've got two states that are somewhere between there you got some other numbers of states that are starting to move toward that break value. Okay, These numbers, the states that have these population sizes, are all kind of, they're on the smaller end. 
And so what the computer did with the natural breaks method is it kind of saw that there was a clump of states with these smaller numbers. And so it created a breakpoint right there to kind of capture all of those and give them all the same color. In the next category, you see other states that fall in the, in the range of 1.9 million to 5.2 million, right? And these states, um, you can see some numbers along each uh, point along this line, but again, kind of creating a clump of states that have sort of similar numbers. And again, they have their own category, which is this second category right here, and they represent another clump of states that have similar numbers, and so they get all the same color, and so on and on that works. And what you see, though, as you go further along, right, this, the ranges get larger, the number of states in them gets smaller, but nevertheless, the computer's trying to capture clumps of data that are sort of similar and then give them colors that way. A more intuitive way of breaking this data might be, though, to use equal interval rather than using natural breaks. So if you, change, you can change the method by which it's classifying the data. Equal interval, I think, is what we'd normally assume we'd do with these kinds of numbers. We'd make all the ranges equally sized, right? So in this case, the range here, for example, is 510,000 to 7.7 .7 million. So we're looking at a range of 7 million, and every single uh, range is about 7 million, so they're all the same sizes, right? Ignoring how many states fall into one category or another. But already you can see an interesting phenomenon. Just the first category, the one that falls between 510,000 and 7.7 .7 million, most of the states fall into that category, into that range. So let's see what happens when we map it this way. So I hit OK. So again, I'm choosing equal interval, same population data, hit OK, and we see a very different population pattern in the map. Right? California still stands out, but most of the rest of the state gets washed out because most states fall into that lowest category of low population numbers. And so this isn't necessarily wrong, it's just showing you a different pattern from the previous map that we looked at. Right? It simply shows, I think, that there are a few really big states with large populations and most of the rest of the country has much smaller populations. So total population showed in two different ways with the natural breaks classification which is the default versus an equal interval which is more intuitive in terms of the, how the numbers are handled but shows you a different pattern. Okay, last thing to consider. Um, when we're comparing populations across different sized units, in this case states of vastly different sizes, right? California and Texas are enormous states. And so it raises the question, is it fair to compare populations in California and Texas to say populations in Massachusetts or Connecticut or maybe in Rhode Island when those are such tiny states over here in the Northeast, right? And when we're comparing populations, maybe we're not interested so much in that just the total number of people, but maybe we're, we're really trying to get a sense of how crowded these states are. Well, when that happens, when you have these very different sizes of units, what you really want to do is to normalize the data, adjust them for the different sizes of the states. So in this case, if we, we, the one way that we can normalize the data is to take into account those different sizes. Essentially divide the population numbers by the size of the areas. And if we do that, then what we'd be getting is population density rather than total population. So the way that you do that is you go into the properties for that layer and you have your value fields as population 2005 but under it where it says normalization you want to choose a column that has the areas of the states so it turns out that there is in fact a column called SQMI or square miles which is the size of the state so if I choose that what it'll do is it'll divide the population of each state by its total area and what you end up with are numbers that mean so many people per square mile. So on the low end you have some states that have as little as 1.1 people per square mile and some places that have as many as 8,500 people per square mile. A vast difference. So, But this normalization process actually makes them more comparable because it eliminates the effect of the size of the state and looks instead at how many people are there, how many people are there in a more comparable way. So let's take a look at what that what that shows us. So I hit, I'll hit OK and we have a completely different pattern again for the entire US, right? California still kind of sticks out, right? So does Florida um, and a lot of the uh, uh, states in the Midwest and around the Great Lakes and but the Northeast is what really stands out in terms of population density. 
particular New Jersey and Rhode Island really stick out and show that they have very high population densities, very crowded relative to the rest of the country. Right? So three different ways of showing population. So the question is which one to show, and it really depends on what you're trying to get at, what kinds of patterns you're trying to reveal.